Hello and welcome to the Daily Comic and Collectible, episode 492. Now today, the collectible of the day is the Bandai Spirits, Tamashi Nations, Marvel Comics, Maisho Manga Realization, Samurai Spider-Man Action Figure. The hit My Show series from Tamashi Nations everyone has been talking about is reimagining Marvel heroes starting with Samurai Spider-Man. Leave it to top sculptor and designer Takaya to take Spider-Man back to feudal Japan in full web-like samurai warrior armor design. True to the feudal spirit, Samurai Spider-Man's ninja Kaganawa-style grappling hook is crafted as chain-like firing mechanism. Like the preceding movie realization products before it, Samurai Spider-Man is crafted with semi-soft materials that allow for superior articulations and dynamic posing. Samurai Spider-Man stands a little over 7 inches in height and was inspired by the Marvel Comics version of Spidey. Crafted with semi-soft materials, allows superior articulation for dynamic posing and advanced form of play. Box includes Spider-Man figure, three interchangeable hands, Japanese katana set, and the Kaganawa webhook with kneaded wrist parts. My Show Manga Realization is a high-quality series of figures with reimagined manga-themed characters from top creators. The redesigns have a traditional Japanese motif that differs from the original work, creating a truly unique Spider-Man. This figure was designed by Takeya and was released by Bandai Spirits. Now, the comic of the day is Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 1, Issue Number 372, with a cover date of January 1993. This is part five of the Invasion of the Spider Slayer arc, and this is the second story in this issue. With story by Al Milgram, art by Aaron Loprest, and cover by Mark Bagley. This story is titled Punch Counterpunch. The story opens with Peter Parker agreeing to a sparring match with Flash Thompson. As the two men climb into the ring, Flash can't help but remember the time that Peter sucker punched him in a boxing match back when they were in high school. Flash promises to go easy against Peter now that he's had a few professional fights under his belt. As they begin to fight, Peter is quick to dodge Flash's punches, thanks to his spider sense. The pair begins to talk about the apparent return of Peter's parents. Peter explains that the entire experience has him totally freaked out. Flash tells him to see sense, wondering who would intentionally trick him, pointing out that Richard and Mary's story is plausible. Peter supposes Flash is right, but can't tell his friend about his fears that this is some kind of trick being played on him by one of Spider-Man's many foes. Realizing that he's letting his spider powers make it too easy, Peter allows Thompson to land a few blows. Changing the subject, Flash asks Peter if he remembers the time when he said that he had never bullied Peter when they were in high school. He admits that he wasn't telling Peter the full truth and begins telling Peter about his father. He explains that his father was an academic who had little interest in sports, and thought that they were a waste of time. Seeing the type of student Peter was, and how his father would have liked him, made Flash jealous, and he targeted Parker because of it. He apologizes to Peter for all the torment he caused in high school. Peter accepts his apologies and asks if Flash ever reconciled with his father. Flash explains that he never did that his father had died of a heart attack years before they first met. Using this as a comparison, Flash tells Peter to give his parents a chance before they're no longer around and he's left with nothing but regret. With this, 
Peter allows himself to be knocked down by a punch. He agrees to give it a shot, and the two friends leave to get some sodas. This story is continued in Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 373. Geek Fact Peter knocked out Flash with a single punch years earlier in Amazing Spider-Man, volume 1, issue number 8, from January of 1964. Bonus Geek Fact Peter and Flash had the same conversation back in Web of Spider-Man, Volume 1, Issue Number 11, from February of 1986. Advertising Ad Fact! Available now! The Wayne's World VCR board game comes with everything you see here! Not dweebs! You are not worthy of even glancing at the unattainable mega babe above. <laughs> but you can play the coolest, most excellent game in the universe till you hurl. Just pop the Wayne and Garth videotape into the VCR, and those raucous rockers will lead you around the totally awesome game board right into the party central. On the way, Collect party makers, babes, and hunks. And coveted backstage passes become the ultimate party animal. Then, maybe you'll be good enough for the babe. Yeah, right. And monkeys might fly out of my butt. But no matter what, get Wayne's World, the VCR board game today. And yes, you could get that babe. Swing! State of the art gaming. Snakes, rats, poison, and danger. It's like eating in the cafeteria. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Not only is the Holy Grail about to fall into the wrong hands, they already have their hands on your father. Dr. Jones Sr. There's still time, but you better step it up and don't make any mistakes. Fight your way through five levels of danger, pack with action, be smart, steady, and above all else, fast. And you might have a chance. Blow it, and your father and the world are doomed. This game is only recommended for those up to the challenge. Available only for Sega Genesis and Game Gear. Get your game today! And final geek fact. The personality of Harrison Thompson and his apparent death by heart attack presented here is actually false. As seen in Untold Tales of Spider-Man, Volume 1, Issue Number 19 from March of 1997, Harrison was actually a police officer, alcoholic, and abusive parent. Further, in Web Spinners, Tales of Spider-Man, Volume 1, Issue Number 9 from September of 1999, showed that Harrison pushed his son to be athletic often abusing him if he didn't make the cut. He's actually quite alive at the time of this story and won't die until years later in Venom, volume number two, issue number seven, from November of 2011. The first time Flash confronts his father after high school was in Spectacular Spider-Man, issues number 248 and 250 from August of 1997. Flash has been depicted as being ashamed of his abusive past while struggling with his own alcoholism. It's presumed Flash made up this story that he told Spider-Man. However, Peter was already aware of Flash's upbringing from Web Spinner's Tales of Spider-Man issue number 9 when he discovered this while using his spider powers to break into Flash's home. Peter is simply accepting this story 
to preserve his double identity. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Daily Comic and Collectible, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. This is Cat Fan Comics Man, and I'll catch you on the flip. Over and out. <laughs>